Right, here we are with Shane McGuigan, the trainer of Daniel Dubois. How's he looking? Yeah, he's looking good. Look, we started our sparring uh, this week, so it's uh, you know it's it's the start of his heavy part of camp. Um, we've got less than five weeks to go, um, and we've got two you know good sparring partners in. So we're going to do uh, three hard weeks of sparring, and we we'll go out to America, get a couple out there, and uh, we'll roll on in. When are you heading out there? We're going to head out on May the 29th, which is a Sunday, and then we'll do a week of training, mm -hmm. um, and then we'll take a week week, week of tapering down. How much have you seen this man improve? I think, you know, the fact that we had two fights back to back, I didn't have long for the first fight, and then obviously the second fight was a one round blowout. But, you know, he's been in the gym non stop. He's had maybe, since we've been working together a year, he's literally had like three or four weeks off maximum. Um, so I, I, I think it's going to show. I believe it's going to show. It's, it's um, you know, he's improved his speed, he's improved his head movement, his jab. One thing me saying it, but then I want to want to go out there and, and prove it on the on the night, you know, and um, under the lights because sometimes you can forget a lot of things and fall into bad habits when you get put under a big occasion. But you know, we've had enough time to work together that I believe you'll see see big improvements. A lot of people in boxing, not just the fans but fighters, promoters, they're talking about how this is quite an easy fight for Daniel Dubois. Is there a danger? that he's going to be complacent heading into this fight because a lot of people don't really rate Trevor Bryan. Well, he's won everything, you know, and that's the thing you can't discredit. You know, he's won everything. Yes, he looks unmotivated sometimes, Trevor Bryan. Um, and, you know, he looks like he's out of shape. Um, but he's a, he's a gym rat. You can see he's, he's, he's been around the gym um, since he was a kid. You, he's got that typical American style where he's, he's really good defensively, defensively sound. He might not be the most explosive and, and the fastest heavyweight, but he's technically sound um, and he's good at taking your shots away from you. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to take us time to break him down. Um, I don't believe it's just going to be a, a blitz, like a, a one or two round job that I think people are, are sort of labelling it as. Um, once Daniel hits him clean, I think he will go, but it's going to be hard to nail him cl yeah, clean, and I think he's going to be in the best physical shape he's ever been in. I've heard Larry Holmes is in the camp, and uh, he's really taking this one serious. So, look, we can't, we can't overlook him. Uh, we're going to have to make sure that we're fully prepared, but that's what we're doing. Well, you, you mentioned there about the, the American style. Well, yeah. Daniel's come across... Kevin Johnson yeah. before, earlier part of his yeah. career, and Kevin Johnson was the first man to extend him the distance, and yeah. Daniel couldn't really land clean on him. Can you see similarities in Kevin Johnson and Trevor Bryant? Yeah, but I don't think, I, I think Trevor Bryant will be doing it more from the centre of the ring. I don't think he'll be, you know, um, relaxing on the ropes. Uh, um, you know, Johnson used to just sit back on the ropes and just try and just go the distance. This guy's going to come to win, um, and I think when he comes to have a go when he opens up tries to throw punches he's going to get caught but um, definitely same sort of defensive style I just think he'll be a bit more attacking and that's that's, that's what's going to um, lead to him getting knocked out I really believe and this Larry Holmes being in camp is this just PR or can he actually uh, have a bit of an effect on Trevor Bryan well Larry Holmes has actually come down tomorrow to our gym to do some photos he's, he's in the UK uh, a good friend of ours Scott Murray said uh, he's about and he'd love to pop in and say hello you know, I think he's done a couple of weeks in camp. I don't think he's like he might turn up and, and sort of pat him on the back on on fight day. But it's uh, it's more just along the lines that you know one or two bits of advice. But he's not going to come in. I've, I've made sure he's not able to come in and watch any training. But we'll get some photos afterwards and we'll say hello. And uh, you know, I mean, it's not very often you get Larry Holmes and uh, to come down the gym. So yeah, we're, we're going to. Just sounds like I've come on the wrong day, to be honest, mate. <laughs> yeah, well, tomorrow he's sparring as well. But uh, no, it's good because you get a chance to see the pad work and see uh, what, we, what we're working on. It would be remiss of me to not get your uh, your thoughts on the general boxing landscape. We've just seen a bit of an upset in the light heavyweight division. Canelo lost to Dimitri Bivol. What, what were your thoughts on that fight? I really believed it was the wrong fight for Canelo to take. Um, I know people will shoot me down and say that uh, better, better Bayev, which I call him, but a lot of people Baturbiev. Uh, Some just say better behave. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> but, um, you know, he's... Uh, I think the fact that he's slower would have been a, a, a better fight for Canelo because Canelo's got a fantastic chin. Mm. Um, you know, he's great at sort of applying cl clever pressure, but he always lacks 
he, he always struggles when people have got good feet and if they've got good punch resistance and they can hold a shot and they can stick to a game plan, which Bivol did, um, you're going to cause him problems because size beat him the other night. It wasn't actual technical ability, it was size. You know, he was, he was loading up a little bit too much, but that's because he was loading up against a bigger man and it saps you. Um, so I think, you know, it's not, we can't discredit how good he is. He's, he's a f phenomenal fighter, but um, I just think, you know, they, they matched him against possibly the, the, the one person that's that's all wrong for his style. Um, you know, it, it, I think if you, you'd have gone up so, uh, better by if he's been over a few times, there is a bit of chinks there. He went up to 91 kilos as an amateur. I think bringing himself down to 79 kilos really struck, like boils him down. It, it loses his resistance a little bit. Matchmaking, I probably would have pushed that fight a bit more, but then again, you know, he's up, he's up at a weight category that's not natural to him. Um, and he might still look come unstuck, but you know, he's he's done everything um, everything today. I think it's going to be interesting to see how the rematch goes if they do it at super middleweight, mm. which I think uh, Bivol stressed that he'd like to do that. You know, we'll, we'll see how that one goes. Feels like an alpha move from Bivol though, being like, okay, people are saying that I was too big for him. No problem, let's do it at your weight. Yeah, well, his weight would be middleweight, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's somewhere in between. Yeah, I mean, it would definitely be a, a much fairer, fairer chance. And I actually think it would suit Canelo because he'll be bringing his weight down. He'll probably be a bit sharper in camp. So that's that's what I'd like to see. I'd like to see the, the rematch at super middleweight as, you know, as Bivol's stress that he can do it. Yeah, it would def definitely uh, be a little bit more competitive. What about Fury against White? It was a six-round yeah. knockout for Tyson Fury. Did the fight play out as you expected? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I thought Dylan White... Everyone says you know he he looked he looked bad in the fight, but I just think he was in there with a guy that is just so good at nullifying and making people look clumsy. Um, you know he's six foot nine, he can move, and and he's carrying a bit more power these days as well. So, um, I, you know, White coming out southpaw, I'm not sure, not too sure. I kind of agree with that one, um, but you know I, it would have always been the outcome. You know Tyson Fury is too good for for Dylan White. Dylan White's a very good fighter, but he's a he's a step down from the top tier, um, and you know Tyson Fury is you know the number one. Are you looking at that fight, uh, particularly with Dylan White coming off that loss as a future foe for Daniel Dubois? Say he gets hold of this WBA title, yeah. Dylan White's going to want a route back to the top. That's a future fight there, right? Surely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you know, you've got Dylan White, you've got um, Derek Chisora, two big names that um, you know that that have been in great contests, um, box the best people. Um, and I think you know that would be good to have on Daniel's record. You know he needs he needs to he needs to get a, a few wins at that at that level. And I think um, those two people you know make great sense because you know, they're they're known to the to the UK public, and uh, they'd be good they'd be good tests for him. Um, but I believe he beats both of them. Do you feel like he beats both of them right now? Definitely. Yeah, I really do. I mean. And, and that's nothing to discredit both of those guys. I just think, you know, I know, I know how good he is. Um, and, you know, I think Joe Joyce is a step above them. Um, and, yeah, I mean, like, that's his only, only blemish. And, you know, he was arguably ahead on the cards going into that 10th that, uh, round. Something heading into this fight, which hasn't really happened too much for previous Dubois fights, his opponent is vocal. Um, I know Daniel doesn't do an awful lot on social media, no. but you may see some of this stuff. Uh, Trevor Bryan's been yeah. hitting speed bags and saying that's that's your head. Yeah. He's been putting up pictures of Caroline. I've does seen does that. this? That's a bit distasteful. Yeah, I mean, it, it, like for me, working with the family, working with Caroline, it's a bit distasteful that he's doing that. But I mean, it's all going to come cr crumbling down on him. It's going to be a, a you know a really harsh lesson that he's uh, that he's going to learn because it's just going to wind him up more. Even though he doesn't see it, Caroline will see it and show him. So. Um, yeah, we'll, 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 uh, yeah, I think he's in for a lot of pain. Lovely speaking to you, Shane. Thanks for having us down. Cheers, Dad. Thanks, mate. Cheers.